apply for a grant, we include a power analysis. This shows how many subjects we'll need to get a significant effect. We'll be doing that today with neuralpowertools.org. It's simple, easy, and only takes a few minutes. So let's get started. Neural Power Tools is a website for fMRI power analyses designed by Yoka Dernetz and her colleagues. A power analysis takes a small sample of subjects and calculates how large of a sample you would need to get a significant effect. 80% power is the standard for fMRI studies. When people talk about a study having 80% power, they mean that when they run the study, there's an 80% chance they'll find a significant effect if it's there. Grant reviewers are taking a gamble when they fund your study and they want good odds that it'll work. This is NeuroPower Tools. You can do your power analysis here, follow their tutorial, or read the paper that's behind the tool. To do our tutorial, we're going to be using a data set from NeuroVault. NeuroVault has data sets and group level maps from all kinds of studies. If you don't have pilot data of your own, you can use a similar study listed here to do a power analysis. To see what they have, click on Collections, See All Collections, and then click on whatever study interests you. This will give you a list of different group level maps or different contrasts. In this case, let's say past, greater than future. Also note the type of map, either a Z map or a T map. For this tutorial, we'll be using a data set from Russ Poldrack's group. Once you find something that you want to use, right click on Download, click on Copy Link Address, and then go back to Neural Power Tools. We can now get started with the power analysis by clicking on Neural Power down here. And this will give you an overview of all the different steps that you'll be doing here. Click on Start, and then paste that link into this URL right here. If you have pilot data of your own, say a group level map from SPM, or AFNI, or FSL, anything that's in nifty format, you can upload it using this command right here. Also, if you have a region of interest that you're restricting your analyses to, you can also upload that mask right here with this file. You're going to need to read the paper from these pilot studies, if you pulled them from NeuroVault, to know different parameters you'll need for the power analysis. For example, are the data ZRT values? What's the screening threshold? How many subjects does a group map represent? Is this a one sample or two sample test? What's the alpha level for the statistical tests? Usually this one is just 0.05. And lastly, what is the smoothness of the data in the x, y, z directions and the voxel size in the x, y, and z directions? In this case, we know that they smooth with the five millimeter smoothing kernel. We also know that the final smoothness is probably gonna be significantly greater than that. For right now, I'm just gonna put in an estimate of eight in every direction. Also, we know that the voxel size is two by two by two. So I'm going to fill in all those parameters right here. There's going to be Z. Screening threshold 0.01, 14 subjects, one sample test, 0.05 alpha level, smoothness of 888, 222 for the voxel size, and we're going to submit the parameters. Next, we're going to look at the viewer. This will show you, if you pulled your data from NeuroVault, the group level Z map or T map. The peak table is simply the coordinates of each peak Z value or T value, as you may have it. And the model fit is going to show you whether this is valid or not. Now, this is very complicated, and by that I mean I don't completely understand it. But if in general, on the left, you find your red line following pretty well these shaded, these lightly shaded blue boxes, and if on the right panel, you see that the red and the blue lines roughly overlap, there's a good chance that everything worked out just fine. Lastly, the power calculation is what you're most interested in. And this will generate power curves to show you what sample size you'll need for a certain power. So in this case, we see different kinds of corrections. In purple, there's uncorrected. In blue, there's some other correction mechanisms I've never heard about. It's probably pretty cool though. And in green is random field theory, in addition to Bonferroni in red. So let's say that I'm planning on using a random field theory correction, cluster correction. And I wanna know how many subjects I need in my sample for 80% power. I just fill in those two fields right there, submit parameters, and it will give me a very precise crosshair focusing on what sample size I'll need. So to obtain power of 0.8, this study would require a sample size of 46 subjects. There you go. Before you go, let's talk about a couple of things that you shouldn't do with this tool. First of all, a power analysis assumes that your new data set will include the total number of people 
the power analysis says that you'll need. So for example, if your sample includes five subjects and you're in a power analysis, it tells you you need 45 to reach 80% power. That means you need a new data set of 45 people. That doesn't mean you just keep the first five people and collect an additional 40 people. As an example, think of a pot of soup as an analogy. You take a sample of the pot of soup, you take a little spoonful, swish around your mouth and you find out stuff like, is it too hot? Does it need more salt? How much soup do I need for 80% power? Normal stuff like that. You don't then spit it back out into the soup because that's disgusting. Ugh. Nobody wants your backwash. Once you're done with that sample, you're done with it. You don't use it again. Another common error is something called a post hoc power analysis. That's where you use the power analysis tool on a data set you already collected, a full data set, to see how much power you had. Now, I can't think of a soup analogy for why you shouldn't do this, but there's some links below for why this is a big no no. So that's all there is to it, neuralpowertools.org. It's simple, easy, and like I said, only takes a few minutes to use. So when you apply for that next grant and you get it, don't forget the little guy. By which I mean the people who made that neural power tool.